Okay, we're doing a quick demo here of how we zinc plate aluminum. Now here's a piece of aluminum that we're going to be plating. Uh, anytime you want to do any kind of plating on aluminum, you're always going to start with a zincate coating. That's an absolute. There's nothing else in my knowledge or in our chem lab that can be used for plating directly onto aluminum. So anytime you're plating aluminum, you're always starting with zincate plating. Now I'm going to make this quick. We would normally go through all three or four cleaning steps that we do in the lab. A hot dip ultrasonic alkali cleaner, an acidic cleaner, and the Actane 73 cleaner, another acidic cleaner, takes oxides off. But unique to when we're doing zincate plating on aluminum is a very aggressive cleaning with sodium hydroxide. We're going into a 20 or 30 percent solution of sodium hydroxide. Uh, you get bubbling immediately on the surface of the piece. I think you can see some of the bubbling action. Okay, so we come out of there. And we're going to go in for a quick rinse. And speed is of the essence here. You don't have to be crazy fast, but you don't want to wait five minutes at this point for the next step. And the next step is the zincate solution that we buy from Caswell Plating. Now we're going in there, we're going to agitate, and we're going to stay in here for roughly 30 seconds. It's not critical. And when you're zincating, you won't read this in all the books or all the references, but fairly standard procedure that we like to follow is called double zincate. So we're going to start with a layer of zincate. You can see we've gone from silvery aluminum to a, a gray coating, gray coloration. The zincate solution, we buy this from Caswell. It comes in a couple different bottles, a couple components. You mix it up with distilled water, and then you've got a solution that will last for years. Uh, depending on how, how much you're using it. You might want to change it out every year or two just for the sake of maintaining that solution. This particular container though, I can see it's very clean, very clear and fresh looking. So I'm confident this is a good solution of zincate right here. And we're getting a wonderful result too. That's our first uh, layer of zincate. I'm going to give that a quick rinse. But we're going to double zincate this part. So even though it looks beautiful, we're going to take that off. We're going into nitric acid for a few seconds. The theory behind this is a little bit vague, but I think you can regard the first zincate as a bit of a cleaning step. This dip into nitric acid can be regarded as another cleaning step. Okay, we've come out of the nitric acid, and we're pretty much back to just looking like aluminum at this point. water, this distilled water rinse. And then we go back into the zincate. Again, the time is not critical, but give it typically 20 to 30 seconds. Can't even go a minute. There's no reason to not go longer. And you'll almost always notice that on the second zincation step, uh, you get a different coloration than on the first. And for some reason it's not necessarily uniform. In this case I'm getting a darker coating, I would say. Uh, I've seen many times where the second coat is actually a, a lighter, thinner looking coat of zincate. I don't understand the difference. It doesn't seem to be really temperature dependent or time dependent. Uh, the devil is in the details with plating and you don't always understand all the details necessarily. Okay, so there we go. That's our that's a beautiful result there of double zincation on about a three square inch piece of aluminum. 
really intended to do that in this video, but let's go ahead and uh, do our next possible plating step on this. Now in our lab here at the CDL, when you've done zincation on aluminum, your next step is either going to be copper plating with alkali copper, a Caswell product called flash copper, or we can use a, an electroless nickel plate, uh, end plate 7601. Okay, so I'm going to go into an electroplate now of uh, alkali copper. Okay, checking my power supply down below. I'm seeing 0.2 amps. This is three square inches of material. Um, I know that if I was plating at 60 milliamps, I would be at about three amps per square foot. I'm at two amps, so I'm at roughly 10 amps per square foot. If you do the math, 200 milliamps into three square inches, uh, I think you will see is about 10 amps per square foot, which is a bit on the high side, honestly. I'm going to back my current down. About at 0.14 amps, 140 milliamps right now. And we'll see what kind of a result we get here. I've got a heater running in this uh, alkali copper solution right now, which Caswell calls their flash copper. Uh, I don't think I'm really heated up to the proper temperature yet, but it might be close enough to get a reasonable result. We actually haven't used this bath for almost two years right now, so I'm not 100% comfortable with the state of the bath, but that's the reason we're doing testing on uh, small pieces like this. This is not a production part, it's just a test piece. Yeah, we're getting pretty good looking copper on there. Like always, we like to agitate so that you're replenishing the, the plating solution right at the surface of the part which is where all the action is actually, is right at the surface. The kind of preparation I'm doing right now between zincate, double zincate, and then into this copper solution, this is exactly how we prepare a part for copper electroforming. The next step after this copper plating would be to go into the uh, gold bath, put maybe 100 to 200 micro inches of gold on the piece, which gold would then become the interior surface of an electroformed waveguide structure. And we don't typically put a lot of copper on. The goal is not to copper plate. The goal is to establish a barrier layer of copper. You never want to do gold plating directly over zincate because gold and zinc will dissolve into each other very readily. So you always need to have a barrier layer, which can be either alkali copper or electroless nickel. In the case of electroforms, we use alkali copper because when we eventually etch the mandrel out of the part, we're going to etch out, etch out the aluminum mandrel. We're going to etch out the little bit of zincate, which is on the aluminum. And we're also going to etch out this copper plating. And then we'll be down to the gold layer which goes on here next as the final finished layer inside of an electroform. Okay, so I think we're done at this point. I'm putting, turning the current off. And there we go. So that's a little bit on the dark side for copper plating. Um, I might want to adjust the current density a bit, you know, based on the state of the bath, this two-year-old bath. And it might be that when we get heated up to normal temperature, which is on the order of 50 C, uh, that we'll get a better result. But this is not terrible. You wouldn't want this as a finished copper plate. It doesn't look that pretty. Uh, but if this is just a base coat, a barrier layer between the zincate and gold plating, I'm pretty sure I could go into the gold tank now and get a decent result on this part. 
Uh, so that's it. That's a quick look at how we do zincate to prepare for copper plating on aluminum. And zincate plating is essential anytime you want to plate anything onto aluminum.